Now, your principal research right now is in so-called broadening mm -hmm. my perception. Mm -hmm. You have a lot to say about meditation and the impact of meditation. Right. right. How did that begin in your research? Yeah. What is documentable? Right. The reason I got into studying meditation was I was um, the theoretical perspective that I've worked on is is called the broaden and build theory. Um, I uh, developed that about ten years ago to describe the benefits of positive emotions. They broaden our thinking, but the real payoff of this broadened thinking is that it it transforms people for the better. It builds their resources. So to be able to test that part of the theory, that positive, we had done numerous studies in the laboratory to show that positive emotions broaden thinking. And we've now wanted to move on to see whether um, positive emotions, um, if you increase your daily diet of positive emotions, how does that change people? And so we were looking for a way to induce positive emotions day in and day out that wouldn't um, uh, grow stale. Um, uh, you know, if we use the things that we use in the laboratory, show a comedy clip or something, you just couldn't do that every day and have it be effective. So um, we turned to uh, meditation techniques in part because there'd been there's a uh, a line of evidence suggesting that um, increasing mindfulness actually um, uh, allows uh, positive experiences to stay fresh. And so uh, a meditation practice can allow people to sort of appreciate um, small things and really um, allow the positive emotions to come from those small everyday interactions. So we did a study where we had about 200 working adults. We randomly assigned them to either be in a meditation group or not. And then we tracked them over three months. We looked at, we took a snapshot survey of them before they started. We measured their emotional experiences over three months and then you know, took another picture of them um, with a survey uh, after three months and then a year later. And what we found was uh, really impressive in that those who started the meditation practice, the first couple weeks it was hard. They, they experienced a, um, no greater positive emotions than anyone else because like any lifestyle change, it's going to be difficult. But after three weeks, their positive emotions um, just blossomed. They, they experienced much more um, joy when interacting with others, much more um, engagement in their work. And then we found, at, when we looked at them three months later, that they were um, changed by that experience of having more positive emotions day to day. The thing that I found especially fascinating was that Statistically, we could isolate the benefit of meditation was coming through the positive emotions, that the greater positive emotions that meditation was producing. So we were able to say that it was the positive emotions that really drove the, the changes in people, allowed them to become more resilient, more um, engaged with their community. Um, actually, they reported being um, healthier in terms of everyday aches and pains. Um, now, so. some people build walls around themselves. Mm -hmm. I won't let you in. You might hurt me. So right. I did. Right. In that first three weeks at that study group, mm -hmm. how much of that was the fear of breaking down that protection that I've built up all these years around right. me? Right. Right. Is that is that a problem you have to overcome? I think it is. I mean, I think there's a way in which, um, as uh, people might be hesitant to experience positive emotions because they do tend to break down these mm -hmm. these walls that we've. Um, uh, built um, metaphorically between yes. us and others. And um, we know that um, there's, a, there's an element of trust that needs to be in place where, for people to feel safe, mm -hmm. that, that um, uh, people aren't going to experience a lot of positive emotions if they're not al also feeling um, what I call safe and satiated. You yeah. know, they kind of have their basic needs met. So sometimes uh, if people aren't in a, in a place that's um, comfortable, or secure enough for them that this blossoming won't happen. Um, but I think those first um, several weeks, people get a taste of, of mm -hmm. you know, that yeah, the, there is growth for me if I keep investing in this area, and um, and it, it goes from there. The ad, the adaptation here in the title is positive emotion and psychophysiology. Right. Does my attitude have a lot to do with how long I'm going to live? Or how successful my marriage is going to be. Right. There's actually really good, interesting data on that right really? now. Where um, uh, when we when people have done longitudinal studies and looked at people's 
um, expressed positive emotions um, in their 20s and then looked at them. Um, this was a study done um, with uh, nuns. Uh, it was a very, um, there's a study called the Nun Study that's been looking at Alzheimer's especially, mm -hmm. but they've, um, other researchers have looked at the data set for, from different angles and they looked at the entrance essays that these nuns wrote as uh, entrance into the convent when they were in their uh, teens and 20s mm -hmm. and coded those essays for um, how many positive emotion words they used. And though the people who used the most positive emotion words when they were writing these essays when they're 20 years old lived up to 10 years longer than those who had used the least amount of positive emotion words. So this is, you know, predicting over eight decades, six decades of life, um, forecasting that big of a difference in life expectancy. Um, that's one study done with an unusual sample. Um, there have been at least a half a dozen other studies that have linked positive attitudes and positive emotions to living longer. And um, other studies have linked it to um, more successful thriving marriages. Um, other studies have linked it to more success in work. And um, now there's hundreds of s studies that show that um, the relationship between positive emotions and these good outcomes is not just um, when you have good outcomes you feel good. That seems to be fairly obvious, but actually these um, positive feelings um, forecast and pre predict good outcomes. So they're just as much a reflection of success and good outcomes as they are a producer of success and good outcomes. And where my work uniquely fits in uh, this picture is trying to explain how that is so. How is, how is it that positive emotions could lead to these great outcomes and really unpacking the process? It also suggests that the sooner the better. Yeah, yeah. Do you teach that? Yeah. I, um, I think about that a lot. Yes, I think about that a lot. I teach a, a first year seminar to um, Carolina undergrads. It's been a lot of fun. And I, there's an there's a, um, undercurrent of, you know, uh, find a career that it really fascinates you, find connections that really make you feel um, uh, loved and give you an opportunity to love, because these are the things that will fuel your life. I also think of that as, as, a, as a parent. I have a four-year-old and a seven-year-old, mm -hmm. and I try to inject their lives with a lot of positive emotions, too. This makes it interesting, this question. You read so many surveys that say, I don't really like my job, but I've got to stay here to make a living. Right. I got on the wrong track, and I can't get off of it. Right. Uh, is there some way in your research that says I can, that's not literally so? Right. If, I, if I do certain things, I can even make a bad situation better? Right. I, I think that there are ways that um, positive emotions allow people to um, thrive even in difficult circumstances. There's a study that we did right after September 11th where we looked at how the emotions that people were feeling in the weeks after September 11th predicted um, their uh, growth over that year. In psychological growth. We had actually, just by chance, um, tested a sample right before September 11th, and then um, we could measure their resilience. Um, we measured their resilience, and then we um, looked at how optimistic they were feeling um, after September 11th. Most people weren't feeling very optimistic. Mm -hmm. Most people were really um, demoralized, uh, anxious, angry. Um, the people who were really resilient also felt those negative emotions, but intermixed with them, they felt grateful to be um, not harmed themselves, really fascinated in the sort of the human spirit of, of connection that they were seeing unfold after um, those terrible events. And so there, I think there are ways to approach bad circumstances in a way that um, also genuinely recognizes the bad circumstances but finds the good in them as well. And then that's that finding the good in it that allows people to sort of get a toehold on this upward spiral to pull Making up out. your mind 